<laughs> well, praise God. It looks a little bit empty this evening, but we do have a few people that's away from us. There's people traveling. But I'm glad you're here. Amen. I'd rather be here than anywhere that I know of. And we're so, so happy that you're here. Make yourself at home. Let's worship the Lord in spirit as well as in truth. We're going to continue the message we started this morning. And uh, so we look forward to finishing that up. He is here. It'll be in Genesis chapter 26, verse 24. I think that's right. <laughs> Sometimes those numbers get uh, in my head, and I, I, for some reason, 24, 26 come to mind, but I believe it's 26, 24. Does anybody else have that problem? <laughs> oh, no. I, I saw somebody say, oh, no, we don't have that problem. Okay. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in that we can gather again and Lord, uh, we pray for Steve and uh, his family as they travel back from North Georgia. And uh, we have other of our people who are traveling. I just ask your blessings upon their life, give them that safe journey home. I learned today that uh, one of our members was in a pretty bad accident last week and uh, is going through a time of struggle right now with some pain. I lift that particular person up to you and just ask that you bless her and Help her recover and uh, help things get to be better for her. Lord, these old COVID numbers are raising their head up again in South Georgia. Father, we pray that uh, you would minister healing uh, where healing is needed and that those numbers could subside and that things could get better. Now have your way in the service this evening as we sing this song. Bless Lord uh, Patricia as she leads us and help us sing out praises to you. Because worthy are you to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, sister. I requested this song. <laughs> if you will, take your hymnal and turn to page 334. This is Brother Danny's pick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
take your Bibles, turn with me over to the book of Genesis chapter number 26 again. I want us to look at verse number 24 as our text verse of Scripture. And I'll remind you again that as I read this particular verse of Scripture, that uh, we're just using a portion of this uh, as our text verse, but we'll read the verse in its entirety. Uh, look at verse 24, Genesis 26, 24. The Bible says, And the Lord appeared unto him, unto Isaac, that same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. And here's the text again. Fear not, for I am with thee. Boy, that'd be good for us to hear right now. Amen. Fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. The text, fear not, I am with thee, and will bless thee. Let us pray. Father, again, we thank you for this beautiful scripture that reminds us that you are with us, and that truly you will bless us. And uh, the thing about your blessings is their everlasting blessings. And we praise you for that. Lord, uh, those words, fear not, appear in the scriptures some 365 times at least. And so that's one for each day of the year. And we'll soon be entering a new year. And I pray that we'll claim that in this new year. Now, as we look at the remainder of the message that we started this morning, we ask that you use it for our, our good and that you bless it. And God, I pray you'll take the vessel of clay that I now yield to you and that you would speak through it mighty words of wisdom. That'll not only feed our soul, but Lord, that'll spill over out into a lost, a dying, and an uncaring world. That others may see Jesus, for it's in his name I pray. Amen. You know, after we get saved by the grace of God, one of the greatest things that we possess is an ever-present God. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 5, that He will never leave you, nor will He ever forsake you. And what a blessing that is to know that we serve a God that will never leave us, nor will He ever forsake us. Uh, this afternoon I was kind of refreshing and reviewing my memory, and I got to thinking about this, and you know, uh, if God does not enter your kitchen then there's something wrong with your kitchen. Think about that, ladies. If God's not in your kitchen with you, then there's something wrong in your kitchen. If God's not with you in your time of recreation, uh, there's something wrong with your playtime. If uh, God's not with you uh, in anything that you do, then there's something wrong with what you're doing. And I just want you to know that little girl don't bother me now. So you, she, she can come right back on in here with her. Praise God. That's a good sign of life in a church. Children. Amen. So listen. We all believe in a God of the heroic. We like a heroic God, don't we? I mean, our God is a superman. Probably the only superman that is alive. He's a supernatural being. Uh, we watch Superman on TV and we see all of these superheroes that are fictitious, fictitious in nature. But our God is not fictitious. He is a supernatural God. And how grateful we are. We believe in the God of the heroic, but we need a God of the humdrum, commonplace, everyday times that we go through. And I got good news for you. He's that kind of God too. He'll be with you no matter what you go through. Friends, He'll smile on you whenever things are going well. But you better bet that He'll smile on you when things are not going so well. So God is here. The title of the message that I started this morning is He is here. And friend, He is here. We preached for several weeks that the Baby Jesus would be born, and he's been born. We talked about this morning how that he preached to the religious leaders at 12 years old, taught them things that they didn't know, 
Grew up, made a man, preached for three and a half years, died on a cross, was buried in a borrowed tomb, but resurrected and walked out of the grave and is alive forevermore. And we learned this morning that he is here. And whenever we think about our God that is here, uh, he is the gift that God has given to us. God the Father has given to us, Jesus. And this gift that God has given to us is a gift that continues to give. We learned that this morning. Now, I want you to know whenever we think about what we have in this gift that is here present with us, He's done so much and is doing so much for us. We learned this morning that this gift has abolished death. Jesus said, He that lives and believes in Me shall never die. And I, then He asked the question, Believest thou this? And I believe it with all my heart. We learned this morning that uh, He blessed us by forgiving us of our sins. We talked about how people don't like to be told anymore that they're a sinner in need of a Savior. But it's a fact. Friend, if we were not sinners in need of a Savior, Jesus would not have had to come. Amen? But we're sinners in need of a Savior. We learned this morning that He calls us out. I'm a called out one, aren't you? If you're saved by the grace of God, you've been called out by the Spirit of God. We learned this morning that He has delivered us. We learned this morning that He has endued us with power. That's a word we don't hear very much. That's a good old King James word. He's endued us with power. What does that mean? We receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us and it's then that we can get to be witnesses and do those things that God would have for us to do as Christians. We learned this morning that He's freed us. We learned this morning that that He is the gift of true light and the true bread that came down from heaven. We talked about how Moses fed the children of Israel manna from heaven. Uh, that word manna means what is it? They didn't even know what it was. But it was heavenly bread that God caused to rain down so that the children of Israel could be fed. But Jesus made it very clear that He was the true bread that came down from heaven. And He wants to feed our soul. Now as we continue to think about the gift that continues to give the Lord Jesus Christ, there are seven things that I want to share with you this evening. Shared seven with you this morning. I want to share seven with you this evening. First of all, my friend, He is the healer of our infirmities. Every one of you, if you live long enough, you're going to have an infirmity. Uh, <laughs> I have an infirmity that I have to deal with every day. Paul had a thorn in the flesh. He had to deal with that. That was an infirmity. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, the Bible makes it very clear that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah saying he himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. There's not one thing that you'll ever go through in this life that you have to face alone if you're a child of God. Friend, he'll bear that with you. He'll carry the load if you'll let him. But the problem with most of us is we don't want to let him carry the load. Uh, many people will come to an altar of prayer and they'll try to unload uh, whatever it is, their infirmity, and, and, and they won't leave it at the altar of prayer. Many times they'll just pick that up and take it back to the pew with them. But He is the healer of our infirmities. Secondly, I want you to know and realize that He imputed His righteousness unto us. There's another King James word, that word imputed. Now, what does that mean? That means that He gave us His righteousness and took our sin nature to the cross and our sin nature was nailed to the cross and His righteousness was given to us. Now, outside of Jesus Christ, you and I cannot be righteous. Do you know the Bible says all of your righteousness is a filthy rag in the sight of God? That means as good as you can be, it's just not good enough. Now, if you want me to tell you what that really means in good country talk, Miss Marta's not here. Maybe she's not listening to the live stream. I'll just go ahead and say it. Listen, you just ain't good enough. Amen? It ain't, ain't good grammar, but boy, it makes for good preaching. Uh, you're, just, you're just not good enough. 
There's no way that you can be good enough to be righteous enough. So Jesus had your sins. He took your sins in His body. In the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, He looked over into the cup of suffering. And let me tell you something. When He looked over into that cup, it's no wonder He prayed, Father, if it be Your will, let this cup pass from Me. You know why He prayed that prayer? Because every time He looked over into that cup, he saw Dennis's sin. He saw Vera's sin. He saw Nancy's sin. And we could just go around all of the building. He even saw Brother Danny's sin. And boy, he looked at that cup and he said, Good gracious. He said, I don't know if I can bear this. Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. But boy, I'm glad he finished his prayer like this. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And His will was for Jesus to go to the cross of Calvary to nail those sins in that cup of suffering to the cross so that we could be righteous in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now in first, second, I said 1 Corinthians, but it's 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. The Bible says this, to wit to, uh, that God was in Christ. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Listen, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Boy, I'm glad that he's that kind of God, that he don't impute our trespasses to us. He has taken those and nailed them to the cross, and it says, and hath committed us unto the word of reconciliation. Boy, I like that word. We've been reconciled to God. We've been made right with God. We've disrobed the sinful nature, and now... All God sees is the blood of Jesus Christ that has reconciled us. The imputed righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. But then thirdly, the gift that just keeps on giving. He's here. He's here. He justifies us. Now, I like that word justified. Romans chapter 3 verse 24, the Bible says, Be justified freely by His grace. What does that word mean? Being justified freely by His grace. Now listen to me. That means that if you don't have one nickel in your pocket, that you can still be justified. You don't have to buy it because He's already bought it. You don't have to pay a dime for it. If you had to buy it, I'd be in trouble. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you are looking at me real spiritual right now like you could afford to buy it. <laughs> hey, if you had to buy it, you just could not afford it. But the Bible says being justified freely. I like that. Being justified freely. Now, let's talk about that word justified for just a moment. What does that really mean? What does the word justified really mean? It means that because of Jesus and the gift that He gives every day to whosoever will, that gift that keeps giving, He's here, this is what it means. It means that one day you and I will be able to stand, listen, you and I will be able to stand before God just as though we had never sinned. God won't see our sins. Why? Because they're under the blood. We've been justified freely by His grace. So we'll be able to stand before God. Justification simply means being able to stand before God clean, pure. And what's, what's, what is it that's going to purify you? We talked about it this morning. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that's all it takes to bring justification to our soul, therefore being justified freely by His grace. Now, I like that old song, Amazing Grace. Anybody else? Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. And then these modern songwriters come up and added a little bit of something else to it. My change or God. I like that too, amen? Because let me tell you something. When God saved me by His amazing grace, 
There's no more chains that can hold me. The grace of God has set me free. And whom the Lord... We love, hey, we read it this morning. Whom the Lord sets free is free... What? Indeed. That's exactly right. So He justifies you. Now, number four. When He justifies you, that gift that keeps on giving, He's here. He's here. What else does He do for you? Let me tell you what He'll do for you. He's big enough. He's a big enough God that number four, He keeps you. He keeps you. Last week, I... I do a lot of Facebook ministry, and uh, I'm not ashamed to tell you that. Uh, whenever all of that first started, I said I'd never get involved in that. Uh, and as uh, <laughs> it was kind of strange, because when everybody else had to get involved in it, I was already trained. <laughs> because I'd been doing coffee and conversation, morning devotions for, for several years. So I already knew what it was to live stream. Uh, but but I, when all of that started, I said, I won't ever own a computer. And I married a wife that made me go to school, and I had to buy one. And so she taught me how to turn it on, went to school. She'd go teach school, and I'd go to school during the day, uh, trying to earn my degree. And uh, I got kind of tickled at a fellow last week. He looked at me, and he said, Brother Danny, do I see where you got the doctor's degree? I said... Hadn't even got to be a nurse yet. I said, but he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Amen? Uh, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, I don't toot my horn about how much education I've got because, let me tell you something, you have a Ph.D. and all them other Ds, but if you don't have G.O.D., you don't have anything. Amen? You don't have anything. But we serve a God who can keep us. Listen to what the psalmist said in Psalm 121, verse 3. He will not suffer, listen, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Listen to what it says. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Boy, I like that. I like that. Do you know we serve a God that's always on call? Now, I tested the waters one time. Because you know, <laughs> I try to be on call. Uh you know, anytime anybody needs me, if you can, if you can get in touch with me, I'll, I'll certainly come. But, uh, you know, uh, I was diagnosed with sleep apnea. Anybody know what that is? And now at night, I have to wear one of them machines. And, hey, do you know that thing works? Boy, I sleep better now than I've slept in years. The only bad thing about those machines, you don't hear your phone when it rings. So if you need me bad enough, just come beat on the door. <laughs> but you know, I, I woke up early one morning and I decided to test the waters. The Bible says here, He keepeth thee, he that keepeth thee will not sleep nor slumber. I was up early one morning, about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I just stopped what I was doing and I said, Lord, are you there? That small, still voice spoke to my heart just as clearly. And this is what I heard in my spirit. My son, here am I. Now it was two o'clock in the morning. And that was one of them times whenever I got excited. And I woke my wife up and I, I wished I hadn't, but I shouted. I couldn't help it. I said, Well, glory! I said, He's awake. And Marta said, And I am too now. <laughs> But I've never called him that I didn't hear that small, still voice say to my heart, My son, here am I. He's big enough, God, that he keeps you whenever he saves you. And boy, that thrills my soul. And then number five, he's here. He's here to love you. And the thing about his love is His love is an everlasting love. Now, I don't know about you, but it does my heart good every now and then to hear those few little words. I love you. Anybody like to hear those words? Anybody besides me? I love you. 
And I'm not talking about randomly just throwing those words out. I'm talking about saying those words and meaning what you say. Meaning it. I love you. You can't even know what love is if you don't know God. Because the Bible says God is love. These, these people use that word so freely and loosely today. People are throwing that word around like they know what they're talking about. But if you don't know God, you don't even know what you're talking about. I love you. Listen, for God so loved you. Now I know the Bible says for God so loved the world. But, but, but listen, God so loved you. You. Think about that. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, listen, I don't, hey, you may feel unloved, but I'm, I'm here to tell you that God loves you. He loves you. Now, preacher, I can't believe God would love me. He don't, you don't know what I've been involved in. I don't care what you've been involved in. God still loves you. Now, bless my mama's heart. And I thought about her a lot these last couple of days. I miss her so much. But I've already told you that I was a mischievous boy growing up. And I got into a lot of stuff that my mom and daddy didn't teach me to get into. Now, I didn't do nothing really bad, but I was just mischievous. And I'd get caught up in some of those things and everybody in Tifton knew my mom and daddy. And I couldn't do nothing and get away with it at school. I could not. Every, every, hey, all my teachers knew my parents. The principals of the school knew my parents. And I come home one day and this is what I heard my sainted old mama say to me. Son, you ought to be ashamed that that teacher had to get on you like that at school today. Jesus won't love you. Mama always used that kind of psychology to get my attention. And I grew up and made a Baptist preacher. And I went to her one day before she left this world. I said, Mama, you know all the time you told me Jesus wouldn't love me. I said he loved me in spite of myself. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Boy, that's the kind of God he is. He'll love you in spite of yourself. Listen, Jeremiah 31, 3, great scripture. Listen to what the Bible says. The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, listen, yea, I have loved thee, and then he, then he really gets into it. Yea, I have loved thee, listen to this, boy. This one in Baptist shouting times right here. With an ever, hallelujah, with an everlasting love. That's the kind of God that he is. I love you with an everlasting Listen, that's love that just don't quit. There's nothing you can do that will cause God's love to quit. He's going to love you in spite of yourself. Uh, you don't see it so much anymore. But how many of you remember that old pink bunny rabbit that used to advertise the Energizer batteries? Anybody remember that? Tap. Still going. You know what I learned about them Energizer batteries? Hey, they sometimes, they don't still go. But let me tell you something. We serve a God still going, still going. Friends, he's been going for thousands of years, still going. He's still going. He's here. He's here, still going. And listen, he still loves you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness. Have I drawn thee? If you're saved by the grace of God, it's because He's drawn you with His loving kindness. Let's see, I think that's number five. Is that right? So I still got two to go, right? <laughs> number six. He's here. He took something like me that was dead in trespasses and sins and He made me alive. He made me alive. Now, I got to thinking about this whenever we were putting it together. 
Undoubtedly, I haven't been doing my best in the past few years for y'all. Do what? <laughs> well, somebody, somebody, and somebody in this church, in this church, came up to me a week or so ago and says to me, "I don't know what got a hold of you, said, but you're preaching the best you preached in, since you've been with us." You mean it's been bad all the time before? No. I didn't, I, I, I just, you know, hey, maybe something got a hold of me. I don't know. I, I don't know, but hey, it's good. I know it's good. It's good. Amen. Listen, he took something like me that was dead in trespasses and sins and he made me alive. In 1 Corinthians 15, 22, the Bible says, for as in Adam all die, all die. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. I can't remember whether it was Billy Sunday or, or uh, one of those other old time evangelists before Billy Graham made the statement before Billy Graham did. One day soon you'll read that I am dead. Don't you believe a word of it. Because I'm going to be more alive that day than I am right now. And Billy Graham, before he died, he made that same statement. And y'all have heard old Danny Ray say that to y'all a many a time. One day soon, you may get to walk around and look down in my face laying in a casket. And some of y'all will probably say, Look at brother Danny. Don't he look good? Don't he look good? Hey, how many of you have walked around the casket and you looked over in the casket? Listen, I was with one of my deacons. I was pastoring a little small church out from Tifton. I was one of my deacons and uh, one of our church members had passed away. And we went to the funeral home, me and the deacons and the church members, a couple of church members together. And we got to the casket at the funeral home and we walked around and we, we were kind of looking uh, down in the casket. And this little old lady come up to my deacon and says, Oh, don't he look good. My deacon didn't miss a beat. He says, no, he don't. Said he looked better to me yesterday when he was up walking around. But one day, if Jesus tears his coming, this old body of flesh will die. But I'm not going to be dead. This old body may be dead, but hey, I am going to be more alive that day than I am right now standing in the presence of Jesus. When my precious granddaddy left this world, he looked at our family and he said, don't bury me in no suit. He said, I'm going to rest. Put me in my pajamas. And so we did. And I won't ever, my granddaddy, listen, I get a lot of my well, I get a lot of my humor, okay, from him. I will never forget, whenever they told him he didn't have long to live, he, he went to the funeral home and he made his arrangements and he told the funeral director what he wanted. And he said, listen, he said, when you put me in the casket, he said, just kind of turn my head looking at, at the people who will pass by and and the funeral director said, Mr. Shifflett, I've never done that before. Says, why do you want me to do that? He said, well, I want to watch these people come by and look at me. You know? I want to see them. <laughs> That's the kind of fellow he was. He, he just had a sense of humor. And listen, we all ought to have a good sense of humor. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I had a lady one time to say, Preacher, you carry on too much when you preach. And I said to her, Sugar, you need a dose of medicine. A very heart does good like a medicine. Listen, I am happy to tell you that you can be made alive in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then last of all, some of you have been waiting to hear me say that, haven't you? <laughs> this gift, Jesus, that's here, that keeps on giving, one day soon He'll receive you. Now, he's already received you as his child. But one day soon, he'll receive you. Now, preacher, what are you talking about? 
John 14, 3. Jesus said, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will. Do you notice that? I will. He didn't say, I might. Maybe I will. He said, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Now friends, we're serving the God that's here. He's not dead. He's here. And He's here by the power of His Holy Spirit. He's here. But what will you do with Him? I'm thankful that He leaves that choice to you. Now I'll close with this little story because I like to tell little stories about little boys talking to their daddy. I was a mama baby boy. I loved my mama. But I loved my daddy too. And I tried to watch my daddy and I patterned a lot of my life after him. My daddy was a mechanic by trade. And uh, I got a lot of his old tools. And uh, I, I treasure those old tools. Now I'm not near the mechanic that he was, but uh, I'd watch him. Daddy had bought me a little small tool kit, toy one. When he'd get his tool kid out, he'd look at me and he'd say, Okay, boy, go get your tools. we got to work on the lawnmower. And I'd sit there and watch him while he worked on the lawnmower. He'd say, Hand me a screwdriver. I'd get my little plastic screwdriver. Oh, no, son, get me one out of my toolbox. Not yours, my toolbox. But I'm going to close with this story. Listen to this. Little boy looked at his daddy. And he said, Daddy, did Grandpa make you go to church when you were my age? He said, Son, he sure did. You go every Sunday, Daddy? Well, I did as long as Pa was living. The boy bowed his head sadly and said, My goodness, Mama makes me go every Sunday and it probably won't do me a bit of good either. <laughs> Those little eyes are watching Grandpa and Grandma, Daddy and Mama. It's not just enough to say you go to church. you got to apply the Bible the gifts that the Lord has freely given to your life every day. Every day. My mama and daddy took me to church. And I've told you the story. When I got grown, or I thought I was grown, one morning, Daddy and Mama got up to get ready to go to church, and they said, Boy, get your clothes on. You're going to church. And I said, I don't feel like going to church today. Well, you're going anyway. That's what my mother said. Anybody else's mama ever said that to them? You're going anyway. And this is what I said to my dear sweet mama. Well, I may have to go now, but when I get grown and get out on my own, I won't have to go no more. And God called me to preach. <laughs> I believe she prayed the call on me. We all have choices to make. But God is here. He's here. By the power of His Holy Spirit, He's here. And Jesus, as we have talked about, is that gift that just continues to give. 
I've given you 14 things. Seven this morning. Seven this evening. Do you know that I could give you many more? Because He is the God that continues to give. And as long as He is here, He's going to continue to give. And guess what? He'll always be here. He'll always be here. Because man tried to destroy Him, but He couldn't destroy Him. They killed Him on a cross, thought they'd accomplished it. Put Him in a grave, and the grave couldn't hold Him. He's here, and He's very much alive. And he knows exactly what's going on in this world today. And he still loves it in spite of what humanity has done to it. Now we come to a time of commitment and decision where you have to look into your heart and decide and choose what you're going to do with this great God that is here. The choice is yours. As old brother John Gibbs used to say, God don't make us robots. He doesn't push buttons to make us do. He gives us free will and choice to do. So the choice is yours. Stand with me if you will. Father, I love you so much and thank you for the powerful anointing to preach this message. God, I pray that as we sing one verse of some number, whatever they choose to sing, Lord, if there be those who need to make commitment or decision during this hour of commitment and decision, that by faith they'll step out and come. In Jesus' name, amen. Page 320.